finally, a few words on warfarin. Warfarin management can be quite cumbersome for the patient as well as for the healthcare provider. Um, if the INRs go up and down, the patient can do a number of tricks. Number one, and this should be under the guidance of a physician, obviously, take similar doses of warfarin every day, not the typical five milligrams alternating with seven and a half or whatever alternating doses, but take the same dose every day, such as six milligram every day or with a lower dose, two milligrams every day, depending on what the patient really needs. The patient may, with direction of a physician, add vitamin K on a daily basis. This is a low dose, can be bought, bought, be bought uh, over the counter, 100 to 150 microgram per day, and it does stabilize the INA in some people. Switching to brand Kumina or Jantoven may be beneficial, and getting an INA home monitor and testing weekly may be beneficial. I'm a big proponent of INR home monitoring. It gives patients independence. Uh, patients don't have to come to the, to the physician's office to be tested. There are a number of different devices on the market. Often insurance companies reimburse for them. Unfortunately, in the U.S., healthcare professionals are hesitant to have their patients out there in the community with these, these devices uh, because of reimbursement issues for the pharmacist or nurse or physician uh, who then takes all the phone calls, the emails, and does the monitoring of the phone without seeing the patient and being able to bill for that. That needs to change. And then if the patient is being followed by um, a non-structured primary care clinic or uh, hematology orthopedist who doesn't do too many uh, warfarin management patients, a structured Coumadin clinic may be beneficial and a list of the U.S. clinics, uh, at least many of them, can be found on acform.org, nonprofit organization. And then finally, if really the INR fluctuates up and down or the patient does not tolerate warfarin, major fatigue or major hair loss or financial implications because of the visits to the anticoagulation clinic, one could switch to a different drug. Um, and that used to be low molecular weight heparin or Erixtra as an injection. And nowadays, one could contemplate Prodaxa or Zarelto as the new oral agents. And this is really the population where, in my practice at the moment, I do consider using Prodaxa. That's very few patients. But if patients really don't tolerate warfarin well or have a strong preference to be independent of a Coumadin clinic, that would be a place where I would discuss Prodaxa, the pros and cons, now that Zarelto is available, that could be discussed uh, to switch from warfarin.